Welcome to my channel. Today, an art journal tutorial. We are going to use Ninny's napkins, tear resistant tissue, and napkins. Here is the tear resistant tissue that I'm going to use. As I said, it comes from Ninny's napkins. It's called Red Dressed. You can go to the link below and check out all the tear resistant tissue designs that she carries. So I love this and I love the texture this tear resistant tissue gives any project that you're working on. It's more like a th very thin material than tissue paper and it withstands a lot of wet media on it without getting weakened like you would with napkins or tissue paper. So it has a lot of flexibility for decoupage and the like. Now there are some considerations that you need to do when you're using it in mixed media and I'm going to talk about those in this video. So what you saw me doing was just cutting off the excess. Now they cut really easily and I could have cut out the girl but I don't personally like the hard edge that gives. I like the deckled edge that you can get when you water cut on like with with a tissue or a napkin but you can't do that with the tear resistant tissue so you have to do it differently here i'm just painting some of this gray there was that rectangle that was extra light and i didn't want that to show through so i'm painting it a little bit of gray just to knock that back so you don't see that rectangle shining through and as you can see, it is actually going to darken that corner, but it's going to add to the whole effect. So I decided that I'm going to glue this tear resistant tissue down completely on the cover of my art journal. I've gessoed this and then I painted that corner and I'm gluing it down with fluid matte medium. I'm getting, you know, quite wet underneath and it soaks it up the colors are UV resistant and gives a, a good, they're very easy to manipulate. If I wanted to, I could lift this up even when it's wet and relocate it and it would not tear. So you can see the advantages, especially if you're a decoupager and you're putting it on different surfaces. Now I'm putting a coat of the fluid matte medium on top and then I'm going to make sure that it completely dries. So while I set it aside to let it dry, I grab this napkin, which is called Grace Vintage. And I chose this because the rose colors are very similar to the dress. I know it's not exact, but I'm going to deal with that later on. So here I am water cutting the rose the roses and I'm just using a liner brush and a little bit of water and that gives you that deckled edge which fades away and doesn't show when you glue it down. So you just apply the water with the brush, give it a couple seconds, let it soak through and then you pull it apart. So I will cut, water cut all of them and here are the pile of them. I have another two to do and as you can see I'm going to take those roses and I'm going to collage them on and make the skirt for the girl. I'm going to add more color. Now this is a dark background, so I've still got the texture of the tear resistant paper underneath. And then I'm going to add color with these rose elements. So now that it's completely dry, I'm going to cut off the excess and I'm going to use a rotary cutter with my cutting mat to cut it off. This gives a nice straight edge super easy. 
I love using the rotary cutter for to cut napkins and tissue paper when I when I want a straight line and I know you know quilters out there you're probably just shaking your heads but I'm not a quilter so my tool is not being used to cut material now I don't want this coiled area to show up so I am going to color it gray and I grab my gray and it's not dark enough so I'm mixing the gray with the black now I have that straight edge and I want that to meld a little bit better so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start adding I've got the color and now I'm going to add some gesso and I'm going to tap it with my finger and the brush over that edge to make the hard edge disappear. So if you had chosen to get rid of that background and cut out the girl, you would want to maybe do this all the way around the girl before you put, do your background. Just so the hard edge disappears. You don't want it to look like you've just glued something on. You want it to look like whatever your art is at the end that that's what it was supposed to that's how it started so here i'm just dappling you know a mixture of the gray the you know gray paint that i have with the gesso just to really try to get rid of that hard edge now if you were doing this on canvas you would have just lined it up right to the edge and you wouldn't have to worry about the coils now here's what i've noticed with the tear resistant tissues because it's fabric, sometimes when you work it a lot with mixed media, there's a lot of wet stuff going on and you're rubbing and brushing, the fibers start to get loose. So in order to prevent that and to seal this, I am giving it a coat of clear gesso. Now it's going on cloudy. When it's completely dry, this will be clear. It will turn it into a non-porous surface and it will stop the fibers from pilling, if you will, as you go through that mixed media process. Now this tear resistant tissue paper, tissue, um, it gives such a lovely texture on on the page. It's like material or wallpaper. So I've arranged the roses how I like them and once I'm happy I did take a picture of it so I can see how I arranged them, which ones where, and now I'm just slightly get, giving it, putting an outline of where the roses are basically going to go. And I'm using my white Stabilo all pencil. You could use a watercolor pencil for this. You could use, you know, you could even use a pencil. I'm kind of going underneath where they are just so I have an idea of where where everything is so now I am taking white gesso and I am painting this area of the skirt out so I am altering the design of the tear resistant paper And I'm just putting a good coat of gesso on here. Now, if you wanted to just colorize the skirt, which you're, I'm going to do without decoupaging the or collaging the roses on, you could do that as well. But there are so many rose napkins out there that I'm sure you can find roses and, and when you look at that, the skirt that I'm gonna create with those roses, they are absolutely lovely. So I'm just putting the gesso on to knock back that dark color. And then I grab my Inktense blocks and I grab that because I knew I had a burgundy there, it's called Shiraz. And I'm just wetting my block and I'm just going to paint over this. Now the reason I'm painting over this, even though I plan on collaging those roses on, is that sometimes there's spaces in between the roses 
and this color is going to shine through. So if there's areas that I don't cover, this will, I have it colorized now. And in the process of doing this, I discovered, hey, I could, I could just take on any tear resistant one. I can alter the picture by doing just this, gessoing parts of it out and then painting what I want on it. And I'm just building up the colors. And because I want the dress to be the same as the roses down below, I'm just giving it a wash of the colors. And I'm using my intense blocks because they are translucent. And because they are ink, they are different than watercolor in that once the ink tense is dry, it's permanent. You can do a coat of acrylic paint here too if you don't have the intense blocks or something that's there. See, I could have just left it with this, done some uh, mark making on it, adds, added some texture, and gone a whole different route with this page. So now I'm getting those roses and I'm looking at my camera, my picture on the camera of where I have them and I'm just gluing them down with fluid matte medium. And I'm not worried if there's any spaces in between because it's colorized. And because I water cut these, the edges just disappear. Although it does give an extra amount of texture. So you get those ripples and, and whatever from the shading that's on those roses, but you also get some from the layering of all the roses. So now this looks like a very poofy dress. and I'd absolutely love it. So I end up cutting out another couple of flowers, just a piece where I just ran out. I could have just left the paint there and marked it up, but I thought I have excess. There's a lot of roses on that napkin. So I'm just piecing it in and I'm absolutely loving this. At this point, I'm not sure what I wanna do with the background. So if I'm just leaving that decision off. I'm just doing what I do know. So now I'm coming in with the ink tense blocks and I'm colorizing this. Just tweaking the color so that everything, the, the top of the dress and the bottom of the dress is the same colors. And because the napkin roses had all the shading in them they had high, high you know high high cup sh shadows and light you get that coming through now if you look at this be honest if you looked at this you wouldn't know that this was done the way it was done it looks like this was the picture and that's the, our goal when we're creating and combining elements I'm just cutting off the excess. And you'll notice that my focal image, the girl, is not right in the center. She's off a little bit. Now I'm shading around the edge, just like you do on all your art journal pages. This frames it, sets it off. And then I'm shading, I'm going to add some shading on the dress in those shadows that were there with the roses. And then adding my own if, there, if it needs, needs to be. And 
And the trick with the clear gesso on top just totally works. The shading, it's it's where everything's working. And nothing the the tear resistant tissue did not pill at all. I'm just adding more shading, bringing out the girl, making the girl stamp out from the background. And making the hair a little bit darker because, I, again, I want it to stand out. I'd try adding a little bit of highlights, but I just really didn't like the look of it, so I opted to not. I just grabbed a baby wipe and wiped them off. They didn't, they weren't doing it for me. So I grabbed this stencil because it looked very vintage, vintage wallpaper. And basically, at first I was only going to put this in a couple spaces. In the end, I cover the entire gray dark background with this and I'm going tone on tone so I'm going black on top of the multicolored gray and I really like that effect if you want it you could use black modeling paste and do that through the stencil doing the same as what I'm doing or just have a couple areas where you do it where there's you're using the modeling paste and the rest is just black paint stenciled because the stencil isn't a big stencil that i can just put down and stencil all of it i am moving it and realigning it and going section by section it takes a little bit longer but it's doable and I knew this stencil I could match and do that. Some stencils you can't do that. So be, be, be aware of that. If you don't have a brocade type stencil, you can use, you make sure it's smaller scale. And I really think the, it fits the vintage kind of theme. And I'm just moving it, realigning it, and putting it on. I'm avoiding trying to get any of that stenciling on the girl. But getting close enough that it's not leaving a halo around the girl. And then I decide I'm going to do some shading on the outside of the girl i did the other shading on the dress on the girl and now i'm going around the girl and this kind of hides the little bit of lighter halo effect I think it might have looked nice too if I had done the stenciling with some silver paint. That would have added some bling and I thought, I think it might have looked really nice. So 
So I grabbed my Ideology Foam Alphabet Stamps and I chose to go with a very short word, just joy. That's what art journaling and creating gives me. And I'm stamping with black acrylic paint. And then I'm washing, I'm wiping the stencil or the stamp off with a baby wipe. I could have done this in that burgundy color. I think that might have looked nice as well. So there's always options. Inevitably, there are lots of different ways that you could finish this up. So if you're following the steps, feel free to deviate, to make it your own. And as always, whenever you use acrylic paint with any kind of stamp, you want to make sure that you wash it right away. Otherwise, it's going to wreck your stamp. I'm going to give make sure that this is completely dry and then I grabbed my jelly roll it's a white and I'm going to show it to you if I can get the get figure out where the camera is jelly roll and it's tan it's white it's permanent now I haven't used this jelly roll pen for a long time and once I got it working it worked well so I love products that even when you don't work them, they don't deteriorate and stop working. You want to go slow, let the, the, let the ink flow. You could have used a Posca pen. I just thought that the Posca pen might soak into the fabric. Because it's fabric, it's, it's going to take wet medium differently. So I outlined it, that made it stand out, just that little bit of extra. And then I decided to add kind of a line, dot, 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 all the way around. Just very subtle, very slight, but it just ties everything in, the highs, the lows. There was, there was shading in that tear-resistant paper. You can see, you know lighter and darker areas. And you can go over anything if it's not opaque enough for your preferences. As a last detail, I am going to splatter with gold. You know I have to have my bling. So starting with the tear-resistant paper, tear-resistant tissue from Ninny's Napkins and the napkin. This was a relatively easy page. We used one stencil, one stamp, 
one napkin, and one tear-resistant paper. Again, check out the affiliate links in the description book box below. If you have any questions about the tear-resistant paper, I'd be happy to answer whatever I can. I'm still experimenting with it and having fun seeing what I can get it to do. Until next time, go get creative.